I came of age in the era of Pentiums and Power Max. My favorite childhood computing memories involve things like playing Rise of the Triad with a friend by literally dialing into his Windows computer from mine. Hey John, I know you watch these videos sometimes. Anyway, the world of 8-bit micros was just a bit before my time, and I can't help but feel like I missed out on something special. Well, recently I lucked into a beautiful working Commodore 64 setup, locally. And I've picked up a whole bunch of joysticks, peripherals, modern gizmos, and internet connectivity doodads. So today, join me as I speedrun 40 years of 8-bit microcomputing that I missed out on as a kid. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy watching a grown man marvel at computers that are only slightly older than he is, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Together, we're keeping vintage computers out of landfills one by one, whether they like it or not. Ah, the mysterious Commodore 64. Famous, of course, for two things. One, being the best-selling computer model of all time. And two, having the most terrifying theme song for any computer ever. Huh, don't believe me. Well, take a listen. In a world of modern fantasy and ever-changing views and computer terminology Commodore is news Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Cause the Commodore is keeping up with you Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Cause the Commodore is keeping up with you The Commodore, it won't stop keeping up with me. That was silly. Now, when I was a kid, by the time my family finally got a real home computer that wasn't a busted 286 laptop that we found at a flea market, we were well into the era of gigantic honking Pentium systems. So I grew up obsessed with writing programs in QBasic on my middle school DOS computers and then Visual Basic at home. Anyone remember the whole AOL prog scene? But there was always this mysterious specter of a strange world that came before, where my beloved BASIC wasn't just an application to run from DOS or Windows, it was everything. And the computers, they weren't huge hulking behemoths that screamed with fans roaring and hard drives dying. They were small, silent, and dare I say, cute? I mean, the whole computer inside of a keyboard? What? I never really understood this era of computers when I was a kid, even though I missed it by just a couple of years. And it wasn't until I discovered the huge amount of Commodore 64 content right here on YouTube that I realized the simplicity of these basic based micros wasn't a limitation. It was a superpower. Those point and click interfaces of Windows and Macintosh hid the computer away behind layers of abstraction. But in these old micros, the whole computer was right here, fully open and available, ready to do exactly what you tell it to do. So finally, after years of fascination, I found just about the ultimate Commodore 64 setup locally with this beautiful monitor, fully working system, and even the disk drive. And you know, we do a lot of white knuckle upgrading around here. I think it's about time we just Sit back, relax, and enjoy an old computer for what it is. Oh God, I'm gonna wind up taking this thing apart and futzing with it, aren't I? So let me show you all the cool stuff I've picked up for this machine since I got it. We'll play some really cool games and maybe even take this thing online. Right after this word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. In fact, I'm not just here to pitch PCBWay, I'm here to use PCBWay. I recently printed up these very lovely PCBs with white solder mask with a very interesting pattern on them. By the way, it's also PCBWay's fifth annual PCB design contest where you can submit your own creations for a chance at a bunch of really cool prizes. So if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. 
So what really inspired me to finish up this setup here was watching Veronica Explains take her Commodore 64 online with a serial Wi-Fi modem built for the Commodore 64. And that's actually where this cool Linux is awesome and so are you t-shirt comes from. And I had no idea about the vibrant community of BBSs that can cater to the Commodore 64's unique abilities. We'll check out some of those in a bit, but first, let's check out all the cool stuff I got for this ultimate setup. Now, one big issue facing Commodore 64s today is original power supplies, which can be, well, a little more than just flaky. In fact, from what everyone tells me, these things can go so wrong that they will fry the system. So you could recap these and completely redo them, or like I have, there are aftermarket brand new Commodore 64 power supplies, like this one here that I got from Poland. These start at like 33 euros, and uh, the one I got even has a second port to power something else. Now that we have power sorted, we need some way to play games, because what good is a Commodore 64 if you're not playing games? Now, I never got the hang of those little black joysticks, probably because I have huge Hulk hands. So, I found this huge Hulk-sized Ultimate Super Stick. <laughs> oh man, just look at this thing. Now, it doesn't have any of the original packaging, and in fact, it was sent to me just loose in the box here. Oh, it's awesome. It's even clicky, and it has suction cups on the bottom, so it can stay in place during our intense gaming sessions. Now, if you know me, I'm really more of a trackball person. So I found just the thing, this Wiko Command and Control Trackball, which, uh, yeah, it's pretty much just a joystick and trackball form. But check this thing out, it is heavy duty and it weighs a lot more than the joystick, honestly. So yeah, we have two options for playing games, but what if we wanna do something a little more modern, like use Contiki, which is a graphical mouse-based operating system? Well, I found the fabled 1531 Commodore mouse, which again, just plugs right into the joystick port. And look at that, the lovely, Tank mouse, as it's known. And hopefully it works. So yeah, this is a lot of cool stuff. But how are we gonna get games on here to play? Well, we do have the lovely 1541 disk drive and it does work, but that's a little bit tedious. I have something better. The Kung Fu Flash, a cartridge that goes in the cartridge port and takes a micro SD card with images. And then when we wanna go online, well, you've already seen the C64 Wi-Fi modem from Retro Rewind. I also have the C64 NIC, which I don't think we're actually gonna get a chance to use in this video because I need to get an EEPROM programmer so we can use some software with it. All right, so let's hook this thing up and we don't need this disk drive for now, or actually at all, because we're gonna be using this Kung Fu Flash to load software. And I am so excited to have found this beautiful 1702 monitor, which is a color monitor that takes, uh, yeah, chroma, luma, and audio because there is a speaker on the side, I think, under the handle. Or maybe it's on the top, I forget. But in any event, this is gonna give us a great picture. We just plug into the video port on the back here. And we have our aftermarket power supply, which has a switch on the supply itself. So we plug that into power on the C64 here. And then I'll turn this on and then hide it underneath the monitor stand here for that nice clean setup. And we should be ready to turn this thing on. Oh yeah. And right into basic. Haha. <laughs> now of course we need to run some games and software on this thing, or who am I kidding, pretty much just games. 
So we have the Kung Fu Flash here, and I got this from the Future Was 8-Bit, and I have added some other software on here that we'll use to test some of our cool stuff here today. But, it just goes right in the cartridge port. And now when we turn on the system, it's gonna boot right into that cartridge, which loads the Kung Fu Flash operating system, which then lets us explore and execute all of the files on this SD card. <laughs> now, it came with a whole bunch of stuff, including a ton of games, and <laughs> that's really exciting. And I've also put some of my own stuff on here, but for now, here's all the games that I put on here myself, such as 3D Pinball, presented by Ass, I guess. Yeah, this is a fully keyboard controlled game. And it's actually a pretty sweet pinball game, which I'm not very good at. Okay, now what I'm really excited about here, let's hook up our ultimate super stick with Dial a Speed TM and Auto Fire. And yeah, the buttons are just repeated on each side, and I think A and B do the same thing. So, really, this is <laughs> four copies of the same button. Now, when we restart the system, it goes right back into the last thing that was running. And I don't know why it was flashing like that, but there's something we can do on our Kung Fu Flash. Because there are these control buttons here, so we can... Red button to reset it, and then we can go on the keyboard here, delete to go up a directory, or home to go back to the root directory. So I wanna load up a game that I think will use our joystick well. This is a game called Awakening, which is a modern game written in 2015 as part of a game jam, and uh, yeah, it's pretty epic. It's basically, a full-on adventure kind of RPG game. And yeah, this joystick works pretty well, except uh, it, the suction cups maybe have kind of lost their suction over time. Okay, let's try something a little more active with our cool ultimate super stick. Oh yeah, 1943. Doesn't get more active than this game. Oh yeah, auto fire really, really makes this game pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, just cheating a little bit with auto fire. That's ridiculous. Yeah, just an unstoppable death machine. Of course, totally fair. Okay, now the joystick was great. How about our trackball? And uh, this really doesn't sound very good. <laughs> uh, it makes like a different noise depending on which way you roll it. I do think that's a pool ball in there. Oh, it's terrible. You have to really spin it to move and now it stopped working. <laughs> okay, this is not very good. So I guess we're gonna have to at some point take this thing apart and try to fix it. All right, let's check and see if our mouse works and we're gonna do that with Contiki. Now, I think this needs to be in port two. Ooh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not right. Okay, mouse port one. Wow, that works great. Look at that. Yeah, check it out. This mouse pointer is way smoother than I expected it would be from this old ball mouse. Oh, look, our little slidey pads are melting off. That always happens. 
Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do too much with Contiki today. You see, to get Contiki browsing the web, we need some sort of Ethernet solution like this 64 NIC Plus, which allows us to connect an Ethernet cable and plug this into the cartridge port. But there's a problem, at least in this setup, our cartridge port is taken up by the Kung Fu Flash. And the Kung Fu Flash is how we were running Contiki. So we can't really swap this in because there's no way to then run Contiki. Except there sort of is because we can flash an EEPROM with software and install it here and it will boot up and let us use that software. So we could put Contiki on an EEPROM and have a full web internet browsing solution in one single card, which is exactly what I want to do just as soon as I get an EEPROM programmer, which I have been putting off. But no fear, we have another way on the internet. This is the C64 Wi-Fi modem. So we just need to plug in our Kung Fu Flash to the cartridge port and our C64 Wi-Fi modem into the modem port here. Uh-oh, I think the Commodore just broke. <laughs> now when I turn it on, these things just flash rapidly. I think I know what's going on though. I think I made a big stupid here, <laughs> but we're gonna have to take this apart. Yeah, look at that. I blew this fuse right here because I think I did a big stupid and plugged in the Wi-Fi modem while the system was still turned on. And hopefully it didn't do any more damage than that. Thank goodness for these big glass fuses in here. All right, well, today's lesson is don't plug in a cartridge if the machine is on, because if you plug it in kind of crooked, you might short out the pins and blow the fuse. Anyway, I have a terminal program on here called CCGMS, which is kind of recommended by the people who make the Wi-Fi serial modem. And this terminal program is really designed to let you connect to BBSs, although this is a more modern release from 2021, modified by someone called Always. But we can F7 to change things like the baud rate and the modem type, and the Wi-Fi modem comes at a default of 1200 baud, but you can spice things up quite a bit. So I think I still have mine set for the maximum 9,600. Yep. And now I'm talking directly to the ESP8266 microcontroller that's inside the Wi-Fi modem. I can type in AT config, AT plus config to configure things like the Wi-Fi connection, flow control, Oh, and Action Wi-Fi is a hotspot that I made specifically for this video, so you're not gonna find it if you're looking around for it on the internet. But now we can actually connect to online services via their host name. So we do ATDT, which is an old Hayes modem command, but instead of a phone number, we can put a web address. So particlesbbs.dyndns.org, port 6400. All right, after a couple tries, connected to Particles BBS. Yes, we support Commodore Color, 40 columns mode. And then look, look how beautiful this looks on the Commodore 64. Compare that to the last time we connected to Particles BBS from an Apple One replica, yeah. This is awesome. And if you're new to BBSs, you've never seen one before, it's basically what the internet used to be like back in the 80s and even into the 90s. You dial into a BBS hosted on another computer, and I'm pretty sure Particles is hosted on a literal Commodore 64. My favorite part of a BBS is the games. 
And I'm pretty sure I still have the high score on some of these games, but let's double check. My favorite game on here is just WordStar, which is a word scramble game. Hey, look, Mochi figured out my word, which was networking. Okay, so now we have to figure out Simua Tursenkte. Hmm. I just think it's so cool that there are these hidden places on the internet that you can connect to with vintage tech, like a Commodore 64, and have a really great experience on talking to people, playing games, and uh, yeah, there are tons of BBSs still very active. Oh man, I've been having so much fun with this computer, and I'm so incredibly lucky to have found this wonderful setup, and I found it all locally. Amazing. And of all the peripherals that I bought for this machine, my favorite has to be the ultimate super stick here because I've just been playing a whole bunch of games on this machine with the super stick and it has been a ton of fun. There are so many good games, both from back in the day and modern games written for the Commodore 64. Now there are a few more things I wanna to do to make this the ultimate ultimate Commodore 64 setup. Specifically, I wanna get the 64 NIC Plus working, which I need software like Contiki to use this, and to do that I need a different way to load Contiki. So I need to get an EEPROM programmer so I can put Contiki on an EEPROM, I think that'll work. And there's also stuff like the SDIEC, which is a floppy drive emulator, which would free up the cartridge port and allow me to run software off of disk images. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more retro computing shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noseda, Chris Algreta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Dwight A. Spencer, Greg from Rut K Mods, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, and Sutek, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.